Hey, I'm Sarah, and on this channel, we share how to create realistic textures in nature and also document the process of what it's like to start up your own art business. We are about to start painting today. So we are going to be doing the cliffs at Lion's Head, which is super fun. We'll be finishing off the rocks that are gonna go into greenery. So I think I'm gonna paint the cliffs first. Then, because it's brown tones, I'm gonna paint the dirt kind of at the lookout at Purple Valley. And then we're gonna do all the greenery and plants in between for the transition. So this will be exciting. And then it's gonna pour the rest of the week. So Thursday, Friday will be studio days and we'll get to the bears uh, next week, which will be great. It's kind of funny doing these videos because my intro clip of when I record doesn't always line up with how I am chopping the videos in post now. But anyway, we're gonna skip back a little bit in time from that. And I'm going to be adding the uh, kind of cloudy day sky and the cliffs here. So really quick, I wanted to have a light background in there and I decided to add some clouds. One unique thing about doing, you know, a long mural like this with a lot of different scenes and seasons is that there's different weather patterns that I really wanted to use to accentuate different lighting in different sections of the mural. So we went from a really nice warm sunny you know sunset vibe to now a cloudy vibe to really make some of the fall colors in the next section pop and really stand out. So yeah so I'm painting those we're kind of going back to front in the in the scenery so we started with the sky and then the distant kind of islands and land that you can see uh, across georgia bay here and now we're going in and we're just rolling a base color to get it in all of the cracks of the concrete to set up our transition from spring to fall colors over the purple valley lookout so it's quite uh fun and to do these distant trees I really started with a base color and then I'm just adding like splotches of different tones of green in it and trying to see how that looks to get to get that kind of distant perspective and what's fun is we're gonna add a cliff face uh, in the foreground here on this section and you're gonna be able to kind of kneel in front of the mural there and be looking out over the bay which is fun so that's the interactive part for this little chunk and you can see now we're adding some of the yellows and red tones to the transition because you know the Bruce Peninsula is just famous especially in the fall for all of these gorgeous scenic views where you can really see the trees coloring there's you know it's it's popular place in the summer but it's a really popular place for fall color drives as well and I really wanted to you know incorporate all of the seasons that people come and visit to this place so yeah and then i'm taking that green color straight up because if you notice with the bear section it's pretty much going to go rapidly into forest there as well so on both sides of this picture we have to try and create a transition and i'm going to use greenery to do that here so it's going to get pretty interesting i'm really just making it up as i'm going along and this portion of the mural did take me quite a few days and was a bit longer than i thought uh, because it took so much mental figuring it out because it's the first time I've really blended different pictures like this. So here I'm taking a small brush and I'm filling in all of the little holes uh, with paint that are in the concrete. And yeah, so now we're back to the day that I did the first little bit of the intro for. So I'm setting up. We are doing the cliff face in the rocks. Basically, we did a bunch of rocks as a transition. I used some of these sunset orange colors in it so that we could see kind of a warmer tone to the rock and really get that sunset glow on them. Uh, and you can kind of just feel the warmth rating off of them as the last little rays of sun go down. And additionally, I thought it was really important to incorporate an animal to this section of the painting. And for that, we have a monarch butterfly. Moving on now to the dirt. Now you can see that I am working on mixing different shades of brown. You can see my palette there. So I'm playing with different amounts of red, different amounts of yellow, and different amounts of black and white mostly uh, to try and get you know a few different good textures here that we can get. This is one area where the texture of the concrete too that we're painting on can really help uh, kind of accentuate what the ground's gonna look like. So I do a lot of quick you know, washes with dry paint after to bring out the texture in the concrete because it really helps for this section. But yeah, you can see I'm kind of playing with the more colder rock at the tip of the cliff. And then there's slowly different sections of more dirt that's kind of caved in there. So we're right on the uh, Canadian shield here. So you can kind of see that. 
and now it's just playing with different tones of brown and trying to get you know that texture to really come out. This whole process of painting the ground was really a big experiment. I wasn't sure how much greenery I was going to add to cover parts of this up. I wasn't sure how much, you know, little stones I wanted to paint or maybe an anthill. In the end, I decided it was too coarse of a surface to do tiny animals like insects in here, but we definitely thought about it. And with the grass, I was really just playing around with what to do and different leaf textures and different leaf colors, you know, what to do in shadow color, what to do highlight color on the leaves. And we decided that for the background of the plant transition, we're just doing a bunch of ovals. And then I'm adding a little bit of white to the top edge. For the warmer sunset side, I've added a lot of yellow into the leaves. And then you can see the overcast fall side, we've added more white to do that kind of highlight edge on the leaf to you know, separate the two lightings in this different scenes. We're also playing around with adding a bush in the front and that helps uh, transition between the bigger rocks and the dirt I found. And we're keeping a lot of the colors dark and then we're gonna build up from dark to light to kind of create that depth. Okay, quick mid video update cause it's been five days since I've been able to paint on this. But uh, we are going to be working on the transition a bit more with all the plants. So today, the rest of today is going to be a plant day. And I think we're going to add all the accent wildlife towards the end of the mural so we can kind of space it all out and see what we are for time. But basically, this section of the mural is going to be, you know, spring, summer greenery. And then halfway through the lookout, as you can see here, we're going to transition into fall colors, which are going to be pretty fun. So I can't see my phone. Hopefully you saw the mural in there. But yeah, we're gonna go back to the time lapse and get painting. The pacing of these projects is so funny to me because when I quoted this mural and started painting it, I had no idea how long it was gonna take me to paint it. You know, foliage like this really isn't my expertise, but here's some real time footage of how uh, it's going down. And it's just such a learning process for me at this stage in my career. This is my first time painting on concrete, so I didn't know how that was gonna go. And it's just fascinating, I find, looking back at how this was going, especially remembering what my thought process was when I was trying to figure out how to do the next step each day. And yeah, so I hope that these videos also kind of give you just an overall you know, perspective on what it's like to work on these large projects and how it all comes together. But this is real time how I'm doing these leaves. So we're playing around with how this color looks on the lighter sky and also how it looks in the, you know, shadow deeper area of the bush that we're trying to create that illusion of depth in. And we're gonna go back to the time lapse here so you can see me just whip out a bunch of leaves because we wanted this area to look full. We want it to look very full so it really hides the color transition in the sky. It just completely seamlessly blends these two pictures. So we're playing around with different tones of green. We have more yellow green, we have more blue green. And I'm not really worried about highlighting the leaves. I'm gonna do it a little bit on some of the top edges of leaves to give them you know, a bit more of a 3D feel. But at this point, it's a numbers game to try and fill all this space. Painting landscapes is one area of my skill sets I really do want to put more time into and develop further, but it's not part of painting that I necessarily enjoy. Uh, it's kind of crazy because it's not that much different than painting fur. You know, it's the same texture over and over again. It's very repetitive, but when it's an animal and you see that animal really come to life, just get such satisfaction out of it. So I definitely enjoy the wildlife aspects of this painting way more than I do painting leaves. And we're going to jump ahead right about here and do another in-person update in the video. Okay, so this is the plants we have so far. We have the foliage in around the tree, which is looking pretty good. And now we're gonna work a little bit more on smoothing in the area near the rocks. So we're gonna add a few more taller trees and branches, and that should be it for this section. I really wanted to do the right side of the transition first just to get a feel of it. And I thought that side was easier because a bit more of that 
type of you know closer foliage was in the reference image whereas my lighthouse picture with the rocks didn't have any of this so this is the area of the photo that i'm entirely making up and added a bunch of trees to try and you know blend these two sections together i feel good about how high i took the leaves so that you can still see the gaps at the top but it looks like kind of a more smoother transition but yeah this is how you can see i'm doing the rocks so i start with a darker color and then i add the highlight edge we missed all that timeline footage before so you can kind of get a little sneak peek about how i did it here and we're adding green just to help create less of a sharp transition between the two colors of the stone and then the forest so we're adding a bit of grass and other you know bits of foliage between rocks to help kind of ease that section okay we're gonna put the mural behind us for a second today has actually been very rough just for some real talk it's so windy so all the dirt is blowing everywhere all in the paint all over me and my sunscreen it's so hot outside and then the wind blew over our camera so this is what the lens looks like darn it oh well um but yeah we are doing all of the foliage and we're gonna switch to doing time lapse on my phone camera so i do have a tripod for it so you know not all is lost in the uh documenting the process but yeah the footage is gonna change for a little bit and i'm really sad about it but um we're making lots of great painting progress we are working on the transition now if you can see over here so that's that's the update on the mural so far so back to it yeah that was very painful when it blew over i was in shock <laughs> i think it took me like an hour to start painting again because i was just like rattled anyway uh we did get an extra lens eventually so that's sweet but yeah so we're uh working again on filling in the rocks and we do finish this part today even despite the wind and other challenges so one thing that i'm really paying attention to with this is that for the really distant rocks they have to get smaller but in a way that makes sense with the whole scenery so that it doesn't just look like pebbles it looks like they're in the distance so some tips for this are using cooler colors which is tricky with the sunset but yeah and then uh, the other thing is making sure that the leaves that are way back there are really tiny dots or larger chunks that are kind of indiscriminate so you want less detail the further into the picture you go and that also helps create some of that illusion uh, we're also adding really high contrast grass at the front of that section which really helps to also create a bit of depth and perspective so we're setting up our cloth here to help keep the dirt out of our paint I create a little wind barrier for everything there and we're going to be adding some more trees in between the next section because we're going to be transitioning to the forest which is super fun and it's going to have a lot of really really bright fall colors we started adding a bit of fall colors which you'll see in a sec when i zoom in and now we're going to be adding a ton more and a lot of foreground stuff Okay, we're kind of struggling to get uh, time-lapse footage now that my, we're using my phone instead of our broken camera. So sad. Um, but yeah, basically we're gonna put some trees and foliage in here. Then we are moving on to where the bears are. All right, and this is going to conclude our video. Thank you so much for watching everyone. We are going to end with some clips from next week's video where we continue painting the mural. So I hope you enjoy this sneak peek footage and hit the subscribe button so you don't miss the video next week. We'll see you soon.